Welcome to episode 498, Nirasha and Steve Conine, The Finding of Wayfair Nine Lessons. This is an outline of episode 498, lesson 1 to lesson 5. This is an outline of episode 498, lesson 6 to lesson 9. Lesson number 1, two men in a room, bootstrapping. Uh, yeah, I'm doing that tech change. and. The evolution of taking a business from, you know, two guys in a room kind of banging out and trying to get a prototype to market, trying to then turn the prototype into a, a functioning, um, you know, platform and then taking that and scaling that and then splitting it apart and trying to get it bigger has been a really interesting evolution and journey for us. Lesson number two, friendship of 25 years that began in a summer camp. So you guys have been partners since all the way back then? Yeah, like so, how do you like how do you actually stand so, so each other like, all of these years? <laughs> <laughs> so we met each other the summer, bef the summer between junior and senior years of high school oh my at God. the six week program at Cornell, yeah. and then we coincidentally ended up three rooms apart on our freshman year floor in uh, Sperry, which doesn't exist anymore, but it was one of the U halls on West Campus, and and then we were friends for four years, and then we started a business together, and now this is we're on our third business together, but we, yeah we worked together for. Uh, I tell our team a lot is that if you, if you think about your, your life and the, the, the people you spend your waking hours with, which I would consider to be your quality hours in your life, the people you work with are a huge percent of that time. And so, you know, I've spent more waking hours with Nirichir than any human in the world today, even my wife. Um, and we have three children and we spend a lot of time together, but it, it dwarfs, you know, for the 26 whatever years we've spent time together. So Listen, number three, Wayfair's competition as the world's largest online furniture retailer, its competitors are IKEA, Home Depot, Bed Bath & Beyond, Amazon. Lesson number four, start with a small and niche market. Yeah, our idea was we'll just launch a series of websites that are focused on niche categories that are underserved. And so the first one we launched, we launched a website called Racks & Stands, selling TV stands and speaker stands. And we wanted to have the biggest selection, the most organized site with the best service. But there was no brand. We just figured out how to use online advertising to find people who are searching for these categories, drive them, you know, to the site. Lesson number five, grow by learn and iterate. Uh, you know, we wanted to grow something big, but, uh, I, you know, the, the, we definitely didn't have a clear vision. Um, we're very much a sort of uh, learn through iteration shop. And even in the early days, we were very much a learn through iteration team. And just, you know, we, we had big goals in mind. We knew e-commerce was a big market. We knew we could grow it into a big company. And we've iterated into basically being uh, a, a very dominant player in the e-commerce space in the home. That's number six. Celebrate small victories while bootstrapping. I'm really excited to see some of the, some of the, uh, the projects that the teams are presenting today, personally. And I mean, when you, if you're getting into a business, you know, small, I would encourage you to be excited about the small wins along the way. You know, at some point, you, I mean, obviously, we're a big company today, but, you know, we used to think that a $100 day was like a big day. And, you know, your $100 days turn into $1,000 days, turn into $10,000 days, turn into a million dollar days. And it takes a long time, but, like, celebrate the small stuff along the way. Lesson number seven, talk constructively. Uh, the second thing I was going to talk about, you know, a lot of these lessons are basically you learn from mistakes you make. And so the second one's about another mistake made. And it's it basically, we, so we started our first business partnership. We were very young, right? We were just right out of Cornell. And so we really hadn't worked in another business setting yet in a full-time job. And so one of the things, though, we get into these disagreements. We'd be arguing about things. And, you know, these arguments just turn into these fierce arguments, often about stupid things, right? And, and so one of the things that we got very good fortune at is that over the first couple of years of working together, we, we, we actually figured out how to converse and how to sort things out. And that ended up being a really critical skill because what you find is that a lot of business partnerships don't succeed. And the reasons they don't succeed, there's a couple basic ones. And one of them often is that people get stuck on small things. And just like in a marriage, you, know, you, really, you really need to figure out how to work things out together. That's the number eight, split and switch responsibilities. Um, <laughs> one of the other things that we kind of felt out about between the two of us over the early years was just our different skills. So coming out of Cornell, our first company, Neerge was gonna be the software engineer and I was gonna be the sales and marketing guy. We get into it about a month in and we realize we have it reversed. That, you know, it turns out Neeraj is, is very industrious um, uh, and, and, and he's, he's a hard worker, kind of, but more on the intellectual stuff. I tend to be more like the problem du jour, physical, like I, my mother was a farmer, I was raised doing a lot of physical labor. And I, you know, I'm willing to kind of just get right into it and solve the problems today. 
That's number nine. Wayfair exploited only 1% of the world's online home furnishing business. Yeah, so the, the thing about this business, what I mentioned earlier, you know, you should do something that's fun. Well, this business is, I think, a ton of fun we should work with. And then the opportunity, despite the fact that we've had some good success, we've grown to be decent sized. We're, we're a $6 billion company, you know, five, six billion run rate growing at around 40%. And the reason that's possible is our end market is minimum 600 billion in North America and Europe, probably more like a trillion if you add some of the markets that aren't in the clean 600 billion. So at 6 billion, with the amount of change the internet is having, it's still super early days. Yeah. And we, we maybe have 1% or less than 1% market share. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your comments and questions below. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.